Burns are. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Alumless. Thank you so much for tuning in. Glad to have you on the show today. It's a special episode, a bonus episode of Alumless. We're recording today on Tuesday the 14th, but today when you're listening to this, it is Friday the 17th, about a week before Thanksgiving. Uh, we thought we would, we got an announcement to make today. Uh, great yeah, big news. Guests, which we're excited about. And, um, you know, we're, we're taking some time off before or for the Thanksgiving holiday. We won't be back in feeds until the second week of December. So we thought, you know what? Let's get another episode of Alumless in people's feeds. We know how rabid our fans are and how much they'd miss <laughs> having Alumless on their feed on Friday at 1130. So uh, we're, we're here and we're excited to have you listening, tuning in. Um, we will be checking in on the comments section today since we are not broadcasting live. If you have any questions for Chris or myself or our special guests today, Kim Infanti from uh, Syracuse University, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to chime in on those. Uh, before we get too far, I want to make sure to introduce our fantastic presenting sponsor. We as engagement pros are always thinking about how to create more volunteer opportunities. Reason for that is that volunteers give at two or even three times the rate. This is important, particularly for those alumni leaders working in integrated advancement models. We're trying to create a pipeline of donors. At the same time, students throughout their educational journey have questions and could use advice from alumni. As engagement pros are asked to figure out ways to make the alumni network available from prospective student to former student and develop partnerships across campus that will showcase in real terms how valuable the alumni network can be. So that's what Protopia solves for without requiring alumni or students to sign up for another app or a platform. Protopia's AI powered technology activates alumni and turns them into volunteers in a flash. Students and alumni seeking advice are connected while removing the administrative burden to the staff. Protopia is the tool you've been looking for. Visit protopia.co forward slash alumnus and be sure to mention that Ryan and Chris sent you. All right. Chris, it is good to see you, sir. Um, I am glad to have Kim on the show today. Kim and I have known each other for quite some time. And of course, you've worked with Syracuse University uh, recently as, as a client with our friends mm -hmm. at Washburn and McGoldrick. But, you know, Kim is the executive director uh, of digital engagement in the Office of Alumni Engagement and Annual Giving. And so we're going to talk about digital engagement today, one of my very most favorite topics. So let me ask you just this sort of topical to get us started. When I say the phrase digital engagement, what comes to mind? I have to share um, first the second thing that comes to my mind, which is Kim Infanti. But the first <laughs> thing that comes to my mind, and I don't think she'll be offended by this, is Andrew Gosen. Um, I had the chance to hire Andrew back in 09, I think, at, at Cornell University, and he's still there doing amazing things and sort of you know, the th perceived as the thought leader in this space. But if you were going to put a Mount Rushmore up, I'd put Andrew right next to her, or next to him would be Kim, uh, of people who think about digital engagement and, and this space. I always, I used to think about his, the, the main takeaway I had from uh, many, many things I learned from him, but uh, the one that sort of jumps out at me, I use to this day is, um, you know, if you do online engagement well, it'll lead to offline engagement and vice versa. So uh, the, if, you, if, you, if you think about it and as part of a continuum, it's not just a standalone thing. It's not his own strategy. It's a piece of a broader strategy is how he, how he thought of it. Yeah. You know, and digital engagement is, is not a new thing, of course, right? Yeah. We really had a kind of a ramp up of digital engagement and needing to think about it, um, you know, really when social media began to come into prominence in um, 2008, 2009. LinkedIn became a big thing, Facebook, right? MySpace kind of died away. Other platforms have come along and, and we had giving days, right? So that was a yeah. huge program that kind of changed the way that universities think about digital engagement. But so how do you feel this aspect of the work has evolved over the last few years since COVID? I mean, obviously we Everything was digital for a little, yeah, for a couple yeah. of years there, right? And so, do you think we've evolved, or have we kind of gone backwards now that we're a couple of years out from it? Yeah, I think we have evolved significantly. From I, I use O three as sort of the starting point when I think that's when Facebook sort of went to its. You didn't have to have a .edu address to have a Facebook account, and from that point on, we saw I think you know, rising evolution and improvements in this kind of work. 
up through the pandemic. And then with the pandemic, it just took off. And then coming out of the pandemic, what you and I have talked about is that we're seeing people go back to the old pre-pandemic ways and that digital is no longer a part of the strategy. It's, it's let's get everybody in person. And I don't think it's something that we should abandon, but I don't think we should stay wholesale in either. So I, I do think we've taken a step back industry wide. I think there's exceptions at each at, at examples of schools where there's exceptions. i um, curious to see how Kim thinks about it at, at, at Syracuse. But I think as an industry, we've taken a step backwards and, and relying too much on the old analog in-person stuff. So I'm, I'm ready for more digital innovation. And I hope it's not a pandemic that takes it, that gets us there. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. It's been interesting how it, everything was so digital and we were talking about things like hybrid, exactly. right? So we were using terms like everything's, you know, we're going to, everything's going to be both digital and in person and we're going to have, you know, yeah. um, and lots of things have kind of changed and, and I think circled back to the way things were pre-COVID in, in many ways, but in other ways not. So, but let's talk to Kim about it. She's our, she's the, uh, an expert in the space. Hey, Kim, how's it going? Hi guys, so good. How are you? Awesome. Great it's so great you. to have you on Alumnus with us. Kim is the executive director of digital engagement at Syracuse University, specifically in the Office of Alumni Engagement and Annual Giving, which recently became One Team, which we're going to talk mm -hmm. about. Uh, yeah. So let's get to so many places we could start the conversation. Um, but I thought a good place to start would be a bit more about your role at Syracuse, how you're situated organizationally, and, and what maybe are some of your primary responsibilities? Well, first, I am ultra flattered by being named to the Mount Rushmore of digital engagement. That was super <laughs> nice. I was texting the sculptor to see when he could start the build. Um, I, I No, I really appreciate that. So I... Uh, joined the alumni engagement team in 2015, uh, was really our first communications role within the office. And uh, my leader at the time um, saw that this was kind of a, a need, uh, a huge need, and that it wasn't just about your traditional forms of engagement, but more so about how do we connect alumni who are not necessarily on this campus or living anywhere nearby, and how do we make sure that they stay uh, Forever Orange is the name of our campaign that we're currently in. So I am executive director of digital engagement until a few months ago. It was just for the Office of Alumni Engagement. Uh, but we have since welcomed the philanthropic engagement team to our team. So now it's annual giving um, as well. And so my day to day, I, I build a lot of emails um, from day to day. I also you know, when a school or college says, can we send an all alumni invite to our cocktail hour in Toronto for the film festival? I'm like, OK, slow down. Let's uh, let's think about the audience for that email. So I help um, with a lot of the strategy for who's being invited to things and and kind of how we're using our digital tools to ensure that alumni, parents, friends, you know, you name it, stay connected to Syracuse. So every day is different, which I like having been a news reporter where every day was very different. Uh, it's nice to be in this role where things are constantly evolving. Yeah, I think the last time we we talked, um, maybe a couple times, but I remember how much you were gearing up for the giving day that you had and boost cues, right? And I think you were talking about live streams all day long and you know content creation and a really significant operation substantial amount of effort but what so what do you wish people knew or understood about the importance of digital engagement and advancement the first thing that came to mind for me in thinking about this was that digital engagement is a lot more than social i'm not just a girl who tweets a lot at events or X's. although you are good at tweeting yeah. <laughs> thank you xing you yeah. mean xing, uh, or yeah. someone we say these i don't know xing at events um then it's, Twitter, it, it's so much more than that like yeah. Everything we're doing from an event registration, that's digital. From the net promoter score that we're sending out after events, that's digital. From the you know lot Instagram live that we're doing, we just did our Q's 50 awards and you should have seen, I was handling these awards solo, trying to do an Instagram story. They're going so quick through 50 award winners and I'm trying so hard to tag every one of their companies and I just gave up. And so when the awards ended, I ended up finishing the, uh, the Instagram story. But of course that's social, but there's so much more that goes into um, digital engagement and it's the way people interact now. Like think about it, when you wake up in the morning, do you, I mean, hopefully you, you, you know, say hi to your wife, that's in person. But other than that, yeah. maybe, right? I know. <laughs> 
you know, but you're, you're scrolling through social, you're checking your email, you're seeing what Black Friday deals are coming. You're just so online. And if we're not online, then our alumni are like, what are you doing? And um, so I hope that people realize that it's also a lot cheaper to do digital engagement for the most part. Obviously, platforms cost money, but, you know, doing a virtual event, it's obviously open to a lot more people when you're doing things um, digital and you can have attendance numbers that I don't think you would get uh, with in-person engagement. And so that's that's a big piece for me. I just I think a lot about, you know, you mentioned COVID um, when we had only digital during COVID, 40 percent of our event attendees had never done anything with Syracuse before yeah. ever. It was their first alumni engagement event and they did it because they could sit in their cozy jammies and they could participate <laughs> with Syracuse University. And I will say personally, we kind of remember what we did during COVID, but we have our events, people chomping at the bit to get out on the road and do these in-person programs. And I feel like I'm always chirping in the back, like, well, what about this? Let's not forget. Can we do this? Um, and so I'm going to, keep trying to remind people that digital really is a crucial part of our strategy. You, you, you mentioned, go ahead, Brian, sure. I was just, I, I sort of feel the same way. And I kind of remember back when, you know, when I was in a similar role, Kim, when I <laughs> could have convinced my boss and the team that digital was important for many years, right? And it was the key to awareness, key to activation, key to getting people to participate who never had before, moving them along. COVID came, everyone's like digital. And then it's kind of right back to, well, we do the in-person thing and in-person is more valuable than digital. And I think you could make a pretty reasonable case that that's true and advancements about relationships. But I think you could make a pretty compelling case that it's not that digital is far more important as because it reflects the entry point the front door mm -hmm. in many respects but sorry chris you had no respect. no I, I i love what you said i mean what reminded me of uh some of the data that i saw coming out during the pandemic is that the breadth what you just cited in terms of new engagement acts that we didn't see 40 percent of our audience first time diverse people i mean you go right down the line the, the impact that it had and i would say that i believe that the digital um, necessity we had put in place over the pandemic created breadth of engagement. You saw a lot more people come under the tent. I, I worried, I didn't have any data to show, but what would it be for the depth of engagement, which is often built from the in-person face-to-face relationship. So I'm sure, sure we'll see that as in time will tell, but uh, so you, you cited some data points already and you, uh, you talked about NPS in your answer before. What are the most important metrics that you look at from a digital engagement standpoint? How do you measure the success of the work you do? You know, I think a lot of um, folks will get caught up in likes and and how did it do? Right. You know, like oh, how many people how many people saw our video? Well, Facebook is really good at making you feel really good about yourself, <laughs> but right, like some of the views on these videos, you're like, what? <laughs> the views actually equal engagement? Absolutely not. Likes. A little bit better comments absolutely and of course i'm talking social now i'll get into some other pieces but we look a lot at you know not necessarily those smaller metrics but really when we put facebook ads out into the market what are the click-through rates like facebook will tell us these massive huge numbers of the the impressions on this ad well how many people actually clicked and, and did something with that ad right. what is your engagement rate and so that's what i and i will be the first to admit that we have a tremendous member of our team named Addie who came over on the philanthropic engagement side and Addie is like she lives and breathes this stuff. And so Addie's been really great at taking a look at some of our engagement metrics uh, when it comes to social media. And that's been huge for our team. You know, we look at the net promoter score and how people are filling that out after events and, and determining whether, you know, is this an event that we want to keep doing or is this something that, that was not a home run that we may need to, yeah. to stop doing? And I will say we have to do better at that, actually paying attention to what the net promoter score surveys have told us and not just saying like, okay, did the event, let's do it again, no matter what right. the survey says. Yeah. Um, so I think survey feedback is really important. Um, and I, you know, to me, the anecdotal metrics are really important too. The one alum who comments on a post who says, because of Syracuse University, I felt supported to XXX and I wouldn't be where I am without Syracuse University. That's a comment that he may not walk up to you at a cocktail party and be like, I'm here because blah, blah, blah. But on mm -hmm. social, like they, they will share things with you that can really open the door 
for the kind of engagement that will lead to long-term connection and eventually long-term philanthropy. Like I always look at our engagement metrics as like, you know, a step in the door. What, what are these people interested in? And if they're going to show up at a cocktail party and you've done digital engagement really well, they're going to know what's going on at Syracuse university. They're going to know what's important. Right. They're going to feel like they've, they've been connected even if they haven't come out of their houses for five years <laughs> because we've done a good job on digital. And that's what I kind of always have in the back of my mind um, in terms of what we're putting out there into the, the online space. Ryan, Particularly if we ask people questions, right? Yes. Um, uh, Chris, I don't know. We always use the saying when we when we often work with clients is we want to you want to be talking with your alumni, not at them, right? And I think that has a lot to do. And the next question is about kind of how to use social media to communicate effectively with alumni and donors. But I often feel like teams do posts that are designed to get people a direct conversion. Right, where mm -hmm. sign up for this thing, make this gift. Or there's a post that says, okay, watch this video or read this article. Right. And neither of those things are you able to actually measure at the individual level. Now you are actually, because if you have tools like Oracle, Eloqua, or Salesforce Marketing Cloud, right, you can actually see the individuals who are looking at your content. However, like when you ask people questions on social media and prompt them to, comment then that is a like that is a real sort of engagement activity that we ought to be tracking if we can it's kind of hard to wrap our arms around it mm -hmm. but so what are your observations kim around um the way in which social media should play a role in engaging alumni and donors and and when teams are underachieving when it comes to digital engagement on social what are they likely doing putting a lot of content out there and never responding and it drives me banana. And it happens within our team as well, because we all we all go a million different directions. I'm hoping now that we have a few more hands on deck, we can be better about this. But we'll launch ads into the world and there will be comments on those ads and we just never get to them. That is a huge mistake. Like, I'll own it. We have to get better at actually engaging what is it? it's digital engagement. It's not digital putting stuff out there and hoping that it hits. It's engaging with the people who are finding our content online. And so I think that's the biggest mistake, putting the content out there and then forgetting to go back to it. Be a voice, like get on there, even if it's you as a, a team member, if it's you as the voice of whatever brand it is that you're representing, answer people who ask questions. Say to them, you know, when they say Syracuse was the best four years of my life, say, what made you say that? Who is the professor who, like, engage a little bit. And I think that's really where you'll start to see rewards because people will then come back. They'll know there's somebody who's looking at that mm -hmm. content on the other side of the of the computer. Um, and I think that's really important for, for teams to remember. And it's hard because we all do a million different things, right. but I think it's worth it. It's, you know, I was going to ask you a question about scaling this because even at a small liberal arts college mm -hmm. with 25,000 alumni, what you just said is hard to do. You throw in the Syracuse, right? A very complex, large centralized yeah. university with how many alumni? Yeah, two hundred fifty thousand traditional quarter million alumni in, in the traditional sense, right? Um, how do you scale that kind of engagement and response? Is it is it even possible? I think it is if you devote time to it, and that's what I'm thinking about in the new year. And really, with more people, uh, if you carve literally carve out time on the calendar to say. I'm going to spend, you know, 30 minutes every morning when I get in, not even that 15 minutes, just seeing what came in overnight. And there will be times when it's high traffic. Um, when your football team is not doing well, a lot of people have a lot of things to say. Um, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> there's there's ebbs and flows. That's and hypothetical though, right? The volume. <laughs> Although they won this past weekend, which I was know, very so. exciting. <laughs> at Yankee Stadium. That was great. Um, and then don't be afraid too. I think, Sometimes students get a bad rap, our student workers in our office or interns or things like that. We have a phenomenal communications intern within the Office of Alumni Engagement and Annual Giving. She's getting incredible experience. Yeah. She was the one who, when I gave up on the Instagram story, she was like, let me just do it. She was so much, and I'm not that old or slow. She was so <laughs> much faster. She's, you know, tagging left and right. She's like, this is their world. And think about the experience that they can get. And then you're also able to take a little bit off of your plate if you're able to entrust a, a student 
um, to get, and I am not about free labor in any way, shape or form. We have a fabulous paid student intern who's getting tremendous experience yeah, and is yeah, good yeah. at what she does. Um, so shout out to Laura, cause I don't know what we would do without her. She helps us with emails, with our social, you know, just a lot of, a lot of different pieces. So. Yeah, yeah. Students are definitely critical mm -hmm. in helping to keep track of who those people are that are commenting, that are engaging with our posts on social media. And I think, you know, to the point, though, about how do we do this, like, we really don't have anyone in our on our teams that are deployed as a community manager. No. Right. Like there are, we, we do a lot of marketing and communication. Right. We do engagement, but we don't do a lot of ongoing dialogue with our alumni, a person whose job it is to stimulate conversations on the Web, whether that's in a platform on social media or elsewhere. But so you, you mentioned some of your thinking about for next year. But what do you what do you see as the most significant opportunities for teams uh, enhancing digital engagement through tools that are available? So you're going to think this is planted because they're one of our sponsors, but we are absolutely all about Protopia. And I'm not just saying that because there is they're a uh, sponsor of the show. We are really looking at how and specifically how can AI help the work that we are doing in the world of alumni engagement and annual giving. And so for us, Protopia is one that we're actively reviewing right now. It will help us scale engagement in a huge way. Um, but I'm also, you know, I hear other colleagues at other schools who are using ChatGPT to take some of the workload off who are, you know, yes, I can use ChatGPT to figure out a butternut squash soup that doesn't have onion because my my husband hates them. But I could also use ChatGPT, you know, for writing a quick story about an upcoming event. And the amount of time that that takes off of our plates is mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. Yeah. And so that's where I'm looking. Um, yeah. I I just I feel so behind and I hate feeling behind. But that's, you know, as 2024 approaches, I'm really looking at how AI will change our world and what is the what are the implications of AI? Because I think schools need to look at that um, as well. We're also thinking, I don't know if this is kind of off topic, but um, we we were texting a lot at Syracuse University and then we had to pull back because of some legal changes to the way texting works. We're going to start an opt in campaign for alumni who really want to hear from us through texting. You know, and I hear from our students, from Laura and from others that we just speak with, like, that's how we're used to getting messages now. It's so quick. It's so, and I know texting is not new, but I think for us really formulating a texting strategy, not texting about every event, not texting about every, you know, giving opportunity, making sure that we're not only texting when it's time to give. Um, I'm really looking at that for next year as well. So being a better engager on social, texting a really solid strategy for how we use it, and then really keeping an eye on AI um, and its implications. Well, Max will be very pleased to hear that you're uh, exploring. <laughs> yeah, like Protopia. I, and look, you know, I've worked for Protopia the last couple of years. I find it to be immensely exciting. You know, we wouldn't have a partner helping sponsor our alum list that we didn't believe in. And so I think right. everyone should, should check it out. Look, it should be on your radar if you're looking for top of funnel engagement and a way to scale volunteerism. It may not be the right time, but everyone should have a look at it. I mean, we talked yesterday about utilizing alumni more in the admissions process. So this is a big deal for schools and colleges now um, as things change in terms of the way right. the whole admissions process works what you can and can ask on can can and cannot ask on applications so really thinking about getting alumni more involved in the process that is a huge program to do at scale is this something that a protopia or another similar tool could help with where that's another form of engagement and it's happening digitally if you're going to have alumni reaching out to prospective students I don't think they're going to handwrite a letter and mail it to their house. I mean, maybe, but <laughs> I the remember the postcard like, method, right? The, I don't know, even think a lot of folks know how to address letters these days. Yeah. You know, email is well, the way to go, but or write with actual legible, you know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like my handwriting has gone way down in the last several years, and I think I'm getting carpal tunnel in this thumb because I'm constantly <laughs> texting and tweeting and Instagram storying. But anyway, that's a. Uh, Neither here nor there. Um, well, we've got a couple minutes left of the live show, and that always goes really fast. But before we, that uh, went so break, fast. How is it twelve? I know, wow. 
<laughs> Before we break and, and record our bonus section, I want to talk a little bit about the new partnership that we have with you, Kim, and we're really excited about it. A couple more things to nail down, but we're getting much, much closer, I think. And maybe you could just sort of share some of the conversations we've been having, how you're thinking about helping us get the word out about Alumnus and CMAC. Yeah, I, I go first. Sure. I, I'm, I'm I mean, super excited. If you say something wrong, we'll chime in, you know. I am. I am. <laughs> well, at first you, you were, you know, you reached out and I was like, uh, I'm a mom of a three-year-old and how am I going to do? But I think this is going to be so exciting because it's going to get me back into LinkedIn a lot more. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn a, a lot, but really utilizing LinkedIn um, really helping to get the word out on something I believe in. Ryan, you and I go way back like years. I feel like you've been my go-to person for bouncing ideas off. We were, I was just um, thinking about November, 2019, right before everything ended. We were in Atlanta for the Case Alumni Engagement Strategies Conference, faculty for that. How in the world we're now November, 2023, <laughs> four years later, I, I got nothing. Like I now have a three and a half year old and that, that I had just found out I was expecting, but yep. that's how life happens. So um, I'm, I'm excited to help with the newsletter, to help with the LinkedIn engagement and to really ensure folks know about um, not only CMAC, but Alumnus, the podcast specifically, because there's great content. I learned so much. I learned so much from listening to podcasts. My 25 minute commute every day has a different podcast on it. So I'm hoping I can be helpful to you um, and keep my thumbs active, not only for my <laughs> personal accounts, the alumni accounts, but now uh, CMAX work as well. Awesome. Chris, how are you feeling about adding Kim to the team? Um, there's no single word that I could, I mean, ecstatic, I mean, probably the right word I'd put out there. It's going to be um, a game changer. There's another good word, game changer for us. And in terms of how, and Ryan, just Kim, you need to know the little behind the scenes here. Ryan's been pushing me on this kind of thinking to go bigger and, and, and go broader and, and do the things that we need to do to grow as a company. And um, this is a one of the first steps we're taking in this regard that's going to, I think, get our content out more regularly and allow us to expand the operation and get the name and the brand, all that uh, will be built through this effort. So I love that it's you. Let's, let's be clear to our viewers, listeners, that you are not leaving your job at Syracuse. You no. are still full time at Syracuse. And in a couple hours a month, you're going to be spending with us. You're going to help change the world for CMAC. <laughs> no, no pressure. That's what I'm most looking forward to, Ryan. <laughs> no pressure. Well, well, I'm incredibly excited. Kim, I've you know had the, wanted to work with you in some capacity over the years. Whenever I've had opportunities, uh, whether it's, hey, um, Kim, you want to go to Australia and you know work with uh, Case Asia Pacific or you know whatever it is, I, I think of you first. And so this is. A chance for us to to partner up and I, I think this is just the beginning as chris said there's opportunities you know to to grow the content uh that we've they're thinking about yeah. and you know provide more value because i think you know we've gotten great feedback on the value that teams are finding with this show and you know some teams planning their staff meetings around it or showing portions of alumnus during their staff meetings and talking about it we get great you know feedback about it whenever we go to conferences and we've gotten some some new business from it even or at yeah. least some yep. some proposals and so i feel like it's it's working for us it's working for you know our friends across the field and um i think you know chris and i really love this stuff right i think you do too and yeah. so i think that that's what's the most fun about it is we get to talk about stuff that we really enjoy day in and day out all right. Well, we're going to have another 30 minutes with Kim, maybe not quite 30 minutes because Chris has got to hop off and do yeah. a new business call with uh, an exciting new client, which is fantastic. But we will continue the conversation with Kim uh, on the podcast edition. So if you're not a subscriber and you're listening to this on LinkedIn or on YouTube, definitely be sure to subscribe to the podcast. And we'll be back on December the 8th with Rod Grabowski, who's the senior vice president for uh, advancement at the University of Central Florida. Uh, coming up in, I guess, two weeks after the holiday. Yep. All thanks, right. Kim. Well, Great to have thanks you. for listening. Kim, thanks for joining us on the live Thank show. You. Thanks for everyone for listening and um, exciting things to come. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye.